and we're live. Hello, hello Dixie Belle paint fans. How are you today? It is Melissa from the Top Drawer RVA coming to you live from the dining room floor where we sit here every Wednesday around 3 p.m. and play with some paint. So welcome and thanks for joining me. If you are a new watcher and you have not watched me here on the Dixie Belle paint page before, drop it in the comments below. Say hi, let me know where you're watching from. I always love to see those comments afterwards and say hello to everybody. If you are a long-term watcher and you're back to watch me again, Thanks, thanks for joining me. Thanks for coming to hang out with me. And usually these, these puppy dogs, Luna. <laughs> I left the door open again, so they're just gonna come in and make a, a little beautiful appearance, huh? Cute stuff, cuteness. So I have kind of big news today. I have something kind of fun and exciting and I thought you might want to, uh, might want to see what I'm up to. <laughs> it's kind of a big day for me. All right, puppy dog, you're gonna have to move out of the way because I can't do this if you're here. Goodness, Dixie Belle released three brand new stencils today. Did you hear? Did you hear the news? So one of these stencils, actually two of these stencils are inspired by Dixie Belle brand ambassadors. And there are a bunch of us and we get to do fun and wild and crazy things with Dixie Belle. And one of those things just happens to be helping to design new things. So there are two stencils designed by Dixie Belle brand ambassadors. There's myself, Melissa from the Top Drawer RVA, and there's also Connie from Faf Designs. And I'm gonna show you mine first because I'm super excited. And then I'm gonna show you Connie's and we're gonna play with the other one, which is a tea towel floral today. So this is my new stencil. Did you guys see my post today? This is my new cozy sweater stencil. And it's kind of fun and kind of exciting because I gave them the idea on how to design this and that makes it uh, kind of my baby, it makes it my baby. So I actually have a piece here um, that I finished in this beautiful cozy stencil, cozy sweater stencil design and I thought you might want to see it. So it's a beautiful Mylar stencil. It's a different size than you're used to. It's a little bit smaller, which is actually really great for doing drawer sides or the front of drawers. And I use mine to decorate the front of a beautiful dresser. This is actually from my upstairs spare bedroom. I ended up keeping it. This is the drawer front that I did. I did a beautiful raised stencil in the cozy sweater design. Can you see it here on the front? Can you see that beautiful texture? It turned out absolutely gorgeous. I really like it. So if you didn't get a chance to see this whole entire piece, go over to my Facebook page, The Top Drawer RVA, and you can catch the entire piece on there because it's just one drawer of many. <laughs> but I've already put it upstairs into uh, my spare room. So I can't show you the whole thing because it's already moved upstairs. So we have a couple more here as well. This one's gonna be available tomorrow. This is Connie's design. This is the beautiful Lotus Bloom. It's a gorgeous kind of mandala effect on the front of this stencil. Really pretty. You can see that gorgeous detail. Absolutely love it. Go check out her page, Faf Designs. Hers will release tomorrow. Mine is available today. If you click that little linky link above my head, it will take you over there and you can check it out. There's one more, which is the tea towel. Can you see that beautiful tea towel design? And I thought maybe we could take this out today and do a little bit of side stenciling on a drawer and, and see how it goes. So that's definitely an option for today as well. But the thing that we're gonna paint today is this cutie little dresser behind me. Can you see the bottom drawer? Can you see that really pretty glowing ombre blend? This is what I practiced on yesterday just to make sure I like those two colors together because I'd never actually put them together before and I love it. It glows, it shines, it's beautiful. So we're gonna paint this today um, on the front of this beautiful dresser this dresser is a bleeder. It's a bleeder, y'all. It was some red, red wood. Um, I made sure to come in here and do two even coats of Dixie Bell's Boss. Boss is your primer for blocking stains, odors, and bleed through. This stuff is the best. It's the best, y'all. The best. I love it. So this is going to enable me to paint on my surface and not have any of that red wood come through and bleed onto my piece. So two coats of Dixie Bell Gloss went on this piece. I also did clean it with White Lightning. White Lightning is your prep cleaner for all of your furniture products. So what should we do first? You guys wanna do some stencil first? You wanna do some ombre first? It's up to you. We can play and play and play. Check out all the new things. Why don't we take the drawer out first and play with a little bit of stenciling, just so that I can see how uh, it's gonna look on one side and then I'll pop it back in because there's some touch-ups on here. This isn't like a final version of what I want to do to this piece. This was just a practice version to decide that I really liked it. Do you ever do that? Do you ever paint something like just one drawer just to check and make sure that you, you actually really like what you're doing? Sometimes I need to like sit on it a little bit and let it grow on me because if I don't, 
then I start to feel like, I don't know, I just, I need to, see, I'm a visual person. I need to see what's going on. All right, let's take this drawer out. I'm gonna move this over, move this over. It's a hot mess in here, y'all, today. It's a hot mess. Maybe I should turn the whole entire dresser. What do you think? Would that be a smart idea? If I turn it, then we can just do the side maybe with it in. No, I don't know if we could do that. We might have to just take it out because it's awful, awful big. I've got all my repair work on here. There was some boss or, or some mud that I had to do on the bottom over here to fix the corner. Let's take this side. Okay, so I've got one little piece right here of some of my apricot that came through. Let's just give that a little sand and take that off so that it's not going to be prevalent. So this is being cleaned with white lightning. It's just like a, a plain drawer side. I'm going to aim you down so we can play with it together. And we're going to use the new tea towel on the side of this drawer. And then I'm going to put it back in because this drawer is way too big for me to be playing all these little games with. So I'm going to put it back in, but we're going to do a little bit of stenciling so that we can see what this new stencil looks like because I haven't used it yet. And I like new things. So this is the new tea towel floral. Let's see. Do, do, do. You have to look, you have to look at it. You know, if I don't look at a piece and kind of like live with it sometimes, just for a little bit, just so I make sure that I like what I like. I mean, I usually have a general idea, like a plan of what's going to happen in my brain, but sometimes I just need to actually see it. Like I need to see what those colors look like because today we're going to be painting with apricot and we're also going to be painting with drop cloth. Apricot is very peachy. It's pretty pink. Y'all know I'm not a pink, pink girl. But this piece has all the original kind of Heppel White hardware on it, um, that beautiful oval hardware, and I'm going to paint it bright gold. And I'm going to come in here later when it dries, I'm going to do some stripes, and I feel like I want to do pink and green. Is that totally 90s of me? I mean, I know the 90s are back, but like I'm feeling the need for pink, peach, and green. <laughs> I maybe have lost my mind. You know what? It's just paint. If I do the whole entire thing and I go, ew, I hate it. I can paint right over top of it. Wouldn't be the first time, won't be the last. Happens a lot. All right, so this is the new stencil. These little Mylar stencils are a different size. These are 15 inches by seven and a half inches. So like to put on a drawer side, absolutely perfect. This fits like a glove. Look at that, totally perfect, right? So we can actually take this and we can do, like we can stamp some paint in here. We could do a really pretty design. Let's play with it a little bit. I'm gonna tape it up here because I'm gonna leave it vertical so that y'all can see what's happening. So normally I would flip my drawer on its side and I would totally hold this secure. But since I'm trying to do this for the camera so that you all can see what I'm up to today, I'm just gonna tape it in a couple places if I can figure my tape out so that it actually stays a little bit more stationary. This way I won't be sad if it uh, doesn't move because I don't want it to jump around any. I want it to stay where it belongs, which is right here on the side of this piece. Okay, so when I do stenciling it with paint, y'all, I'm kind of a not a good stenciler. When I do it on the front of a piece, I like to use a lot of wax because I kind of like, like a faded stencil. But when I do it on the side of a piece, I tend to like a couple different ways. And we're gonna play with this today and see what way we like better. So I like to keep old sponges that I've, I've used quite a bit with my Gator Hide or my clear coat, and I wash them and I reuse them. So this is literally half of a sponge. This is just something I like to do when I like to push this paint over here. That's gonna let me use less amounts of paint, less amounts of bleed through, but it's on the sides of a drawer. It's really not anything crazy fancy. You just need to kind of get it on there and you know make a pattern. So we can use this and we're gonna try it both ways so we can see the, the effect that we get. So this is half of a blue sponge. And then I also have a best stain brush on the floor. One of my lives last week, somebody said that they really like to use this brush for stippling on the paint when they do their stencils and it allows them to get a, a nice clean effect. So we're gonna try that too. So on the floor today, I have a Moonshine Metallic in Rosé. So I could do the Rosé on the sides, just as like kind of like a slight shadowy stencil. I feel like the metallics are a little bit more forgiving when it comes to stenciling. And I have a paper plate on the floor. So I'm actually gonna pour some out on the paper plate here so that I can dip it in. And I'm also gonna take some paper towel because you need to use a little amount, right? A little amount of paint. You're not using a ton of paint when you're putting this onto your stencil. So this is on here. I mean, you could use your stencil adhesive 
and like stick it on there really well. But I'm just gonna lightly pat it on there. We're gonna use this and we're gonna use the other one. So I'm gonna try this best dang brush like somebody recommended to me. If it was you, speak up, because I'm trying your technique. I like to try new things. So I'm gonna dip it in the rosé and I'm gonna brush it off because less is more when it comes to stenciling, right? I don't wanna rub it too hard because when you rub a stencil, you're gonna pick up those little edges. Do you see how fussy this is? Do you see how many little nooks and crannies there are? So I'm just gonna start to like tap, tap it on there and we're gonna see what happens. Okay, we're gonna try, this is my experiment. You know I like to do crazy things live, try new things, who knows? Might work, might not. But it's the side of a drawer, so why not try something new? Why not play with it a little bit and see what happens? So I'm just kind of stippling it on, right? I'm not pushing it, I'm not twisting it, I'm just really kind of pushing it on. And like I said, I know that metallics are a little bit more forgiving. So we're gonna try this nice, big, flat brush and see what kind of really pretty faded effect we can get. It might stink. I might take the whole thing off. I might paint over top of it and put something else. But for now, let's give it a go because I want to see how this stencil really looks. Okay, so now I've done almost half with my best dang brush. Okay, by blotting it off, not putting a ton on there, right? This is a little minimal amounts of paint, really kind of pouncing it on there, building that layer. I actually feel like that's gonna look really good. Like I feel like this is actually a really great way to try it and thank you to whoever recommended it to me. Now let's try my old school way that I usually do. I usually like to take a blue sponge and I like to again do almost the same thing. You know, pat it off. You don't want a ton of paint on this on this brush, okay, or on this sponge. Let's try the other half with my sponge technique and see which one works out better. Ooh, I can already tell that the brush is working better. This is like, maybe this sponge holds too much paint. But we're gonna do both sides and I'm gonna show you the diff so that you can be the judge and you can let me know which one you will try. So if this was a silk screen stencil, you would have a lot more leeway to really get in there and push that paint in because the silk screen stencils have that sticky back and you're able to do a lot more. This is hard work. This is like a workout for the arms, right? But um, these stencils, these Marlar stencils are a little bit thicker, which makes them amazing for raised stenciling. They're my new fave for raised stenciling. You have to check out on my page, my finished version with the cozy sweater. Okay, so now I did half this half with the brush. I did this half with the sponge. Let's take off our stencil and look at our results. And then we can be the judge of what we like better. Do we like the brush? Do we like the stencil? All right, and I'm gonna move this over out of the way so I don't sit on it. Move this out of the way. And let's close the lid for the metallics, y'all, before we have a big hairy accident. Okay, so this is one drawer side with the stencil, the new tea towel. I did this half with the sponge, sponging on the color. I did this half with the brush for the first time. And y'all, I really, I like that. Look at how good that looks with the brush. The lines are clean. There's not too much paint. That best dang brush really kind of saved the day with staying nice and flat because it has that really flat edge. That looks really, really good, right? The sponge shows up a little bit more because I think there's a thicker amount of paint on there but the edges are less defined than the other side. And again, this is a metallic, right? This is the, the rosé metallic paint. So this itself is just kind of like a shimmery shine. I'm gonna let this dry and I would seal it. Actually, I'll probably seal it with hemp oil because this is the raw wood surface. What do you think? That's the new tea towel. And I'm now a convert to using that beautiful best dang brush on the stencil because that was just the right amount of paint. Thank you, thank you for suggesting that. <laughs> Whoever did that last week or the week before, you were bang on. You're my new best friend because that was, uh, that was a great idea. Should we do the other side before I put it back in? Because that was pretty easy. Look at that nice little shimmery shine. What a pretty stencil. So nice. It's almost like when you open up a drawer and you have that little surprise, that's uh, a nice little thing to have. A nice little pop of color 
Lord, these drawers are massive. They're really big. So let's do it again, shall we? Let's, let's do the other side because I have it out. It's already wet. I'm gonna have to wash it, right? Might as well just do the same thing. Lickety split quick. Okay, so I've got that stencil on here. I'm gonna take my napkin again because that was a good technique. I'm gonna use my best dang brush dipped into the metallics because I poured it out on a little plate and I'm gonna blot it off, okay? Now remember, I just came in here. I know it's not exactly straight. Should I fix that? Probably. Let's fix it. Let's fix this stencil so that it's a straight hit rather than a crooked one because y'all, we don't want crooked right off the bat. So we have minimal amount of paint on there, okay? So my technique was to pounce it on. I didn't really rub it. This is a nice flat surface brush. It holds a lot of pigment in it because it's so thick. So this little brush is actually a synthetic and natural fiber mix. I believe it's 70-30. You know I love it for some blending, but now maybe I'll become the stencil master. Maybe I'll start stenciling everything. Because my issues usually bleed through. You know, I like to, I, my problem is I, I'm too heavy handed half the time. So this is actually a good technique to really kind of bring it back, not use too much paint. But what a great way to decorate the drawer sides. This new size of stencil is really pretty and very helpful. When I used it on the front of my cozy sweater vibe dresser, it was really great to have it fit exactly perfect on the front of a drawer. Because sometimes those really big Mylar stencils, they can get hard to maneuver because when they're really big, like when you look at the really original big ones, I just happened to have one on the floor, I was thinking about it for this piece. Like this is hard to maneuver on a drawer besides the fact that the image itself might be bigger than the drawer front itself. So, you know, by taking it and making it a smaller, much more manageable size, you're gonna be able to create some really fun little looks. Okay, I think that is all I'm gonna do for that. Let's take it off and have a look. Let's have another peek. Yeah, super cute. Okay, so now I'm gonna be using that technique for all of my stenciling because y'all, how easy was that? And how cute is that? So fun, right? Look at that beautiful shimmer. So anytime anybody opens these drawers, they're gonna get such a peek of like a little pink metallic. How adorable. So cute. Let's put it back in and uh, get cracking on the paint job, shall we? It's not small. <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not being very, uh, very graceful, but you know. There we go, it's in. Okay, so the front of this drawer has a couple spots. Like I said, this is my practice drawer. I practiced on this yesterday to make sure that I liked the color combo. So technically it's not done. I need to continue the same um, color pattern all the way up. So I'm gonna show you how we did it. And I'm gonna redo this bottom drawer because there was a couple areas that I had to really get in here and rub. They weren't even, it was bugging me. There's some mud down here that I had to fix for some veneer that I actually peeled off entirely. And once again, this has been prepped with boss and gray, which really helps when you're painting with pinks. It's gonna help you really um, use less amounts of paint because pink is a hard color to use when it comes to pigment. It takes many layers. So using a gray boss is gonna help me. So on the floor, I have a clean best stain brush. Don't just buy one, get a couple because <laughs> now you're going to need one for wax. Now you're going to need one for stenciling and for ombre blending. All right. And I have two regular brushes. All brushes are in stock right now, currently on the Dixie Bell paint page. If you need one and you need to click that little link above my head, it will take you right over there to the Dixie Bell paint page where you can shop and get a couple brushes. Let's see. You love the gray. I love the gray boss. You know, I found that using a roller um, really helps me get an even surface when it comes to putting this on. So I use a roller. I think you can get a pack of four for about nine bucks at your local hardware store. The roller really helps keep it smooth and minimize those brush strokes because it is a thicker kind of a product. You know, it's, it's not like a thin metallic. When you're using Gray Boss, you're using Slick Stick, it's a thicker product. And sometimes getting rid of those brush strokes can be an issue. So using a roller to apply it, I like. I like that a lot. 
Um, on the bottom of the piece, we will be adding some would you bend. Okay, so I have this would you bend to go like this. This is would you bend number 2110. But here's the deal. I'm not painting my would you bend until my dresser is completely painted because I wanna paint this bright gold. I will be using my mousse to paint this. Uh, I like to cut my mousse with a little bit of gloss clear coat that allows it to dry really fast and really hard. So once the dresser's painted and these are painted pure gold, the ability to stick this on here and have that kind of gold stand out is gonna be the bomb because let me show you the Mac Daddy would you bend that I have for the top drawer. <laughs> which is kind of funny, the top drawer and the top drawer. Um, this is one of the new Would You Bends. Did you know that Would You Bend has a couple new designs on the Dixie Belle paint page that are really big? I mean, big and chunky and detailed. Hello, that is absolutely beautiful. This is Would You Bend number 1372.48. Holy cow, that's a lot. But once I paint this gold and I put it on the top drawer, can you imagine this drawer painted in this combination with maybe some limeade green stripes and then stick that gold honey right there? That's gonna look so good. It's gonna look so good. It's really gonna fancy up this flat front dresser. And that's what Would You Bend is. Would You Bend is jewelry for your furniture. I mean, adding this to a piece increases the value greatly because then people look at it like it's super ornate and fancy pants. And who doesn't like fancy pants? I mean, I like fancy pants. So I will paint those and put them on, but I cannot do it until my dresser is painted. So let's do it, shall we? So I have a couple brushes on the floor. Uh, it doesn't matter which brushes you use to apply your paint because we are going to be taking our best egg brush and circling that beautiful color all over the place, okay? I washed these yesterday. They're still a little bit damp. On the outside edges of this piece, we are going to be putting apricot. And I'm gonna say this again. I'm Canadian. Sometimes I say words in a weird and wonderful way. Do you say apricot or do you say apricot? <laughs> There's words that I say that I think people think I, I make stuff up because we pronounce things a little bit differently in Canada sometimes. Um, and my husband literally thinks that I make things up just to bother him. And I don't. It's the way that we've said it. It's the way that I've always said it. And <laughs> it is what it is. So, I like to say apricot, but I know it's probably apricot. Just like things like, what else do I say funny? Process and process. I always said process until I moved to the United States and then I got made fun of. And now I say process. <laughs> it's the American way of saying it. So don't judge me if I say words in a weird and wild, wonderful way. It's just my Canadian accent coming out in me. All right. So this beautiful color is, like I said, apricot, apricot and it's going to require multiple coats of paint because this color itself is a pink pigmented color okay anything that has pink tones or red tones in it when it comes to paint always takes more coverage the fact that i use boss is going to be very helpful with the amount of paint that i'm using but it's still going to take quite a bit of paint it still is it's still gonna take more paint than normally that I would use because it's it's got that pink value to it. So just know that if you're painting pinks or if you're painting um, reds, gray boss really helps with the ability to, you know, use less amounts of paint, but it's still gonna take a little bit more paint than you are usually used to. So down here in the corner, you can see that I used some mud to repair this edge because the veneer was broken and missing. I actually just peeled all of the veneer off the base over here. So peeling off this veneer and then repairing that area with mud should make it pretty much disappear. Is it gonna be perfect? No, but this is vintage. And when something is vintage, it's usually not perfect all the way. You have to know that, you know, there's gonna be a little bit of imperfections and that makes it beautiful. That's what makes everybody beautiful. A little bit of imperfection. Can't be perfect. Can't be perfect all the time. So let's get this apricot onto my piece. If you feel your brush dragging, you can add some water, especially when you're working with some detail like this. Having it to be a little bit more damp and pouncing it in the details is always helpful. 
So the fact that this is going to require that little bit of more paint than I'm used to means that each coat is going to have to be fully dry before I move on to the second coat. If you're answering, asking a question up there and I don't see your question, I do come in afterwards and rewatch my videos. Um, I don't talk a lot to the camera with questions and comments while I'm working, probably because I talk too much. I talk too much, but that's okay. You're always going to learn something. So I'm going to get this on here, this lovely peachy apricot that I usually don't use. It's not a color that I use often. Do you like it? Do you like this color? Is it too pink for you? Like I said, I feel like I'm doing a little bit of a 90s vibe on this piece. Uh, I think I'm going to add some green on here. Definitely going to have gold on here because hello. Who doesn't want gold, especially on their would you bends? I'm a big fan of would you bend and gold. I also have some trim that I'm gonna be applying to um, the edges on the sides because there was more veneer repair needed over there as well. So that means for me, I'm going to have to cover up some of my, my work, some of my stuff that I had to fix. So let's pull this drawer out so that it doesn't get too sticky and at least get that first layer a little bit dry. So when's the last time you painted with apricot? I feel like it's a color I don't see very often. When it comes to the Dixie Belle colors, I tend to not paint a lot of pink um, majority of the time. I don't paint a lot of red either, but I do like it. It's just not my go-to color. Blue is my go-to. I'm always painting blue. Okay, so this piece has been done in kind of like one and a half coats for me to judge the color, right? I'm gonna come in here with my separate brush because you need a separate brush for each color. And then I'm gonna come in with my secondary color, which is drop cloth. Drop cloth is a great neutral. It's a little bit creamy. It's a little bit white. Um, on its own, it's quite more white, but we're gonna ombre blend these colors together. So since this drawer is dry, Let's do this, get it on here, and then ombre blend these colors together. What do you say? Sound like a plan? You hanging in? I'm also gonna do the second coat up here, because like I said, it's gonna take a full two coats of paint, and I kinda want that first coat to be a little bit more dry. Um, it tends to work better with that best dang brush when you're working on a dry first coat. What is that? Something was on there. So let's just kind of get it on there so that it starts to get a little bit dry. This dresser's big. I'm not used to working on these big pieces with you guys. I usually have small pieces that I can move around. But I got this one for a song at the local thrift store because it was broken and all that veneer was missing. People just don't wanna put the sweat equity into uh, the work sometimes, which I do. Give me the broken, discarded pieces and I'm gonna make them beautiful. I actually would rather paint something um, that needs a lot of TLC or an ugly duckling than a pretty piece all day long because it's my jam to take it to the next level. I like to surprise people and <laughs> show them what you can do with garbage because you should be surprised at what you can actually do. There's a lot of stuff you can do when it comes to rescuing old furniture. You can add new tops, you can build new legs, change out the knobs, use your Dixie Belle mud to fix all of those repairs. It's doable, just need a little sweat, a little sweat equity. That was me today at the auction picking up furniture, playing like Tetris to try and get all the furniture in my car. Not my car, my minivan, I should say. My mom, mom mobile. I had to like load and reload four times to try and fit it all in like a crazy person. But I did it and I brought it home and then I started ripping that dresser apart first thing because it needs to be fixed. <laughs> all right, so let's do this. So on the floor, I'm gonna put a piece of paper towel, okay? This is the ugly stage, right? This is, this is the ugly stage. Nobody wants a dresser that looks like this because yikes but if you have paper towel and you have a best dang brush 
and you have a spray bottle filled with water. I'm gonna show you how to make some magic. Are you ready? So this is one coat, this is one coat. This down here has been painted and dried so I'm on my second coat, okay? I'm gonna uncross my legs so that I can really get in here. I'm gonna spray my brush. This is a clean, best dang brush. We're gonna get a cloudy blend. I'm gonna hold my brush up close to the bristles. See how close I'm holding it right here? Okay, and I'm going to start on the darker color and bring it into the lighter color. You can do this, it's not hard. Small circular motion, okay? A small circular motion is going to easily blend these two colors together. I just wanna do the edges first, then we'll move up a little bit. Once you do these edges, you're able to kind of blend the colors a little bit better, but for now, you don't wanna to bring too much of that light into the dark. I can tell I'm gonna want a little bit more pink on the edges over here. I'm gonna add a little bit more of the apricot just here, and I'm going to blot off my brush on my paper towel. If you happen to get a little hair here, because these brushes do shed, they're natural brushes versus like a synthetic brush. They always shed or break a little bit. You can wait till it's dry and gently sand it and that little piece will just pick right out. Cause I get dog hair in here all the time. So I'm gonna add a little bit more of that apricot over here on the sides. Can you see how soft those lines become? Can you see how easy it is to move that color around? It creates such a pretty cloudy blend. It keeps the middle lighter. And this is for all you folks that say you can't ombre blend. Yes, you can. Do you wanna come in closer? Do you wanna see? I'll bring you in even closer and aim you down so that you can even get a closer version of what I'm doing. Can you see that side versus that side? Blended versus not blended, right? It's a big difference. This Best Dang brush has the ability to really pull that blend together, giving you a nice cloudy ombre blend without having to go back and forth with your brushes. Remember, we're working on the edges first, and then I'm gonna come back into the center, wiping it off, wetting, wiping it off, because this is gonna hold that color, right? It's gonna hold that paint. You can already tell I'm gonna want more pink on this side as well, so let's Put a little bit more apricot over here. Blot it off. And start to make that blending magic happen. Okay, so now when I step back and look, I can still see this really kind of precise line of, of drop cloth. If you don't have drop cloth and you want a different color, you can use buttercream. That's close. See, there's another puppy dog hair. What the heck? Get out. Um, you can use buttercream or another neutral, but I, I like a kind of neutral to really pull this together. Wet your brush, blot it off. Let's start to blend this middle a little bit more. Let's start to blend that middle and make that really pretty fade. I'm not gonna lie, this is hard work. It's making my muscles work. It's hard, this is a heavy brush but you can easily achieve a blend that might have taken you much longer before. Because before, when you were doing an ombre blend, you would have had to go back and forth with these two brushes, back and forth, pulling the color together. This is like your cheat brush. This is your cheat sheet. If you don't have one of these, I think it's only $25. You need to buy one. <laughs> because how fast and how easy was that? Now I'm looking down here going, hmm, I wanna add a little bit of that lighter value on the bottom here. Let's add a little bit of it down here as well. So that when I do my would you bend, because remember, down here on the bottom, I'm gonna be using would you bend number 2110 in bright gold to accent that cute little bow friend. So cute, right? So cute. What do you think? Do you think you could give that a go? Do you think you could try that? It's hard for you to see on this camera the actual 
easy blend because you're seeing bright and dark quite up close, right? When I turn this big bright ring light off, you can see that this blend just disappears. This is just like, it literally glows. It is the prettiest pinky blend. I'm, I was super happy when I did it yesterday and I stepped back and I let it get dry and I looked at it because you're gonna find that chalk mineral paint kind of darkens a little bit. Colors change when you put them on your furniture and they get dry. Um, you can't look at it wet and go, that's what it's gonna look like. It's not, it's gonna change color. It's gonna change in value. I find that chalk mineral paint dries and the darker shades go a little lighter and then these lighter shades go a little darker. If I were to come in here and seal this with uh, a satin clear coat or a gator hide, I feel like the colors would deepen a little bit. If I love the exact color, I tend to use wax to finish. I like a wax finish because it doesn't change that color much at all, especially on the darks. Um, if it's dark, I like hemp oil because it just soaks in and makes your life super duper easy. So what do you think? Want to do this drawer now? It's getting dry enough because you really need that really dry value on that first coat. Let's aim you up and watch me do the second one. How are we doing? We're doing well. Let's see, water helps the paint move. Oh, definitely. Did somebody ask why I'm spraying and I missed the comment? I use a spray misting bottle filled with water. You can actually find this on the link above my head as well. Dixie Bell sells them. I like them because they're a mist. Can you see, can you see how it sprays like that versus you know, soaking your piece? Having your chalk mineral paint be wet helps you move that paint around and get that seamless blend that you're looking for. That really easy blend reactivates your paint and just helps you move stuff around. So <laughs> you should get one of these too. This is in, this should be in every person's toolbox. Um, every painter should have one of these. I have two because I need, I always need more than one of everything. <laughs> I'm extra like that. I have two and actually I have a spare because if one breaks, I need another one. But this one is becoming my favorite. You can tell, you can tell that I use my items. Like look at the amount of wear and tear on the things that I use. When I'm teaching and talking to you and teaching you what I'm doing, I use my stuff hard. I really, really kill my brushes when it comes to jamming them in and moving them around. Um, I'm not gentle. So you need to know that I, I definitely put my stamp of approval on Dixie Belle paint products for their ability to take a beating and just keep on going because I am hard on my stuff. It is what it is. So a second coat's gonna definitely go on a little bit thicker. And there's some chunks in there. Um, it's gonna go on a little bit thicker because that first coat is a little bit thinner, right? On the first coat, you're just covering all the wood. On the second coat, you're actually doing your faux finish. You're actually painting your final look. So I'm gonna go in here and add my second coat. You're gonna see me use a lot more water on my second coat than my first. It's gonna minimize my brush strokes and it's gonna allow me to keep my paint active to really blend it and move it around, okay? So I'm coming in here, adding this color, which is drop cloth. Like I said, if you don't have drop cloth, you could use buttercream, you could use sawmill gravy, um, any one of the colors that has kind of that nice neutral feel to it is gonna go well with a pink. And like I said, the pink that I'm using is apricot and it's gonna go around the edges and we're gonna blend it together with our best dang brush, okay? Like the bottom drawer is. And again, I'm gonna take a picture because y'all, you can't see how well this is blended together. It's hard for you to see with these bright lights how seamlessly this actually does go together. It's an easy blend. Cream, that neutral color mixed with anything for blending is always going to be easier. Okay, so I've got my best thing brush. I'm gonna get another paper towel and we are going to use it for blotting off, right? Because this brush is gonna be sprayed with water and it's going to help me move the stuff around. Again, you're gonna see me hold it straight up closer with the bristles, right? It's gonna give me a little bit more control. I'm gonna start on the edges. When you start to feel your brush drag a little bit, stop, spray it, wipe it off because it holds a lot of paint. 
first things first is that I want to just get in here and blend these edges, right? I want to blend these two colors together. Once I get these kind of edges gone, I'm going to come back in and I'm going to work on the middle. And to be honest with you, it might need three coats like I did on the bottom, that kind of coat and a half that I did on the dry surface. We'll see. And I'll wait until it dries because I find that sometimes it's easier to wait until it dries to look at it and see what is actually, you know, showing through. Do you see any of that gray primer? Do you need to add another coat? You're going to have to use a little bit more paint when you come in here with your pinks and your reds because reds and pinks just take that little bit more coverage than a lot of the other colors. So I want to add a little bit more pink over here, a little bit more of this apricot. I just feel like the edges need to be a little bit pinker. Okay, so now that my edges have been blended, let's work on the center. On the bottom down here, I added more of the, of the, um, the lighter neutral color, which is drop cloth, because I felt like I needed to pull it in there more. I feel like this is still pretty thick. Let's see what we can do by just blending these colors together. I just wanna really pull that middle lightness in. And this swirling motion is gonna add a little bit of texture, you guys, but this piece is old, it is vintage. And I see a hair, let's pick that out right now, just fix it. It's gonna have little dings, it's gonna have little marks. I'm okay with a little bit of texture on my piece. I might even come in and do some stenciling over top. Um, I kind of had a plan for using that beautiful Royal Damask over top of this somewhere, somehow whether it be with the drop cloth over top of this on one drawer or both drawers, I haven't decided yet. It could happen. This is a work in progress. This is just, I'm not painting this piece for anybody other than myself to uh, make me happy. Okay, so this I like. I can tell down here, I'm gonna have to come back in and do a little bit more shading here. I can feel where, I can see where this, this pink isn't just holding as well as I'd like it to. So what I'm gonna do is let that get dry and then come back in when it's dry and do another coat. It just needs, just needs a little bit more. Let's work on this top one while we have it. Coming back in, it's a bit of a smaller drawer. I also haven't decided if the sides of this piece will be totally blended in the same way or if I should just do them in a full apricot color. It might be too much pink because this is pretty pink. It just might be too much for me. I might have to do it in the, in the same blended manner. Okay, so now we've got the edges in the apricot. Let's go back in with our drop cloth and put it in the middle. Spraying my brush with water so that it doesn't gunk up because I'm putting it on fairly thickly, right? I wanna cover that gray boss and I wanna have enough paint on here to be able to move around with my best dang brush. Okay, so there you go. We've got our start to this process. We've got our best dang brush, our little towel on the floor to blot off. And let's start in with those small circles. I don't know why I chose pink in a painted pink color versus a fall color. I was just feeling the pink. I told you, I'm feeling those 90 vibes. Those 90s are coming back in style. I mean, I, I can't. I've already lived through it once. <laughs> the, the 90s, it's just, my daughter shops now, she's 12, and she finds these outfits that look like Clueless. And I'm like, like Clueless the movie, not like Clueless, she doesn't know anything. Clueless the movie, which if you're from the 90s, you would know. Clueless the movie. <laughs> I feel like, wow, like, that's like crazy to me that you are choosing to wear those clothes because it really wasn't good the first time around and now it's coming back again. Everything goes in cycles. It's like all those people that say, don't paint your furniture. People have been painting furniture for a billion years. They're always painting furniture. It's not a new trend, let me tell you. People always paint things. You get bored of it, you paint it. My grandma got bored and painted her entire, all of her trim and baseboards in her house purple. I mean, why not? Go with it, have some fun. But those 90s styles, man oh man, those colors and that vibe, I just can't, I don't know about it. 
but this piece is gonna be 90s inspired. We're going pink, peach, cream, gold, and I'm telling you, I really do think I'm going to get in here and paint some stripes in this top drawer in Limeade because why not? Why not be a little, a little crazy? So what do you think? This is pretty much the thought process for this piece. We've got our beautiful apricot or apricot, depending on your accent. We've got our drop cloth as a middle value. I'm gonna put this would you bend down here. You guys wanna paint uh, a little would you bend so I can show you how easy it is to cut your mousse with your gloss. And then maybe we could even stick it on. It's fairly dry down there. I think we could do it. Let's play, shall we? So at the bottom of this piece, I wanna put on this would you bend. This is would you bend number 2110. See it? So cute. Would you bend is a lot of fun. It arrives rigid and hard like this, but when you heat it up with your heat gun, you're able to then bend it and mold it into different shapes. So this is a curved bow front dresser. I'm gonna be able to curve that wood trim exactly to where I wanna put it. So I have a little plate on the floor. Let's open up some mousse and show you what I mean. So mousse, when you open it up, is kind of hard in there, right? It doesn't look like a mousse, but we can make it a mousse. We're gonna take it and we're gonna stir it a lot, okay? Gemstone mousse must be stirred. If you do not stir your gemstone mousse, the pigment is going to settle, and then what's gonna happen is you're not gonna get your full maximum shiny potential, okay? So we're gonna take this, and I'm gonna use the same plate that I used for my rosé, and I'm just gonna pick a corner, and I'm gonna deposit this amount of gemstone mousse right here on my tray. See it? This is my second step. I have gloss. Dixie Belle sells clear coat in gloss, matte, satin, and gator hide, okay? Gloss is very watery. It does not come in this container, but I broke my lid, so now it lives in this container. I'm gonna put a couple drops of gloss, okay? There's my ratio. I can't give you an exact measurement because it's literally just enough to wet the amount of mousse that I put on my plate. I'm gonna mix my gloss in with my gemstone mousse. What's gonna happen is it's gonna take that water-based, highly pigmented gemstone mousse and it's gonna make it smooth and it's gonna make it even shinier and it's gonna allow it to dry very fast. When you're using gemstone mousse on Would You Bend, in my personal experience, it always dries really quickly to begin with. You don't really have a long wait time, but that little amount of gemstone mousse on these Would You Bend moldings is enough to cover. One coat will cover this whole entire thing and then some. When you use it on your piece, then what's gonna happen is your piece will have this gorgeous molding, nice and shiny and rich, because the gemstone mousse has that kind of like a, almost like an antique gold to it. I really like it. And it's gonna dry lickety split. It is my go-to for would you bend. Plus cutting it with a gloss a little bit allows it to really kind of thin out a little bit and get into all of these cracks because this is a highly detailed piece of molding, right? Highly detailed. I'm gonna aim you down here to my giant mess because I want you to be able to see what I'm doing and now I'm getting to the corner so I have to put it down. So I'm just gonna finish painting it and I'm going to blast it with my heat gun. That's gonna dry it so fast. Don't get too hot in your packing blankets because uh, they melt. Did you know that with the heat gun? <laughs> it does, it melts, trust me. See one corner I missed, let's go back in. See one little edge that I missed. All right, put this back down and let's dry it. So when you heat up a wood you've been molding, it becomes bendy. Right now I'm just heating it to dry my gemstone mousse that I put on here to see if I can get it dry enough so that we can stick it on. Now you would think some of the moldings are flat to begin with. Why are you heating them up to stick them on a piece? Well I'm heating them up because I like to know that it's fitting secure, right? It needs to fit and fit well on your piece of furniture. Like I said, this is a bow front, so that means it's curved. And if you took a rigid piece and you tried to stick it on there, it's not gonna stick well. So this little area right here, let's just give it a blast too. I'm 
I mean, normally I would be waiting for all this stuff to dry, but I need to show you stuff, right? I need to show you what's going on. Now, when you adhere your wood, you, would you go spit it out? Would you bends? You're going to want to use wood glue. Wood glue is actually also available on the Dixie Bell paint page. You can get um, all of the products that I'm using today on there easy peasy. So remember this was rigid. Now it's bendy. Can you see how it's bending? <laughs> Let's put some glue on there and stick it on our piece. Because even though my gemstone mousse isn't 100% dry, it really is almost dry. I'm going to smooth it to the edges and we're going to stick it on the bottom of our dresser. And I'm going to turn my back to you for a minute because I want to line it up and make sure I'm not going to get crooked because it could go crooked and I don't want it to. I want to get it right in the middle. So there, I'm sticking this on here and really it's not even that wet anymore. The gemstone mousse is already not coming off. Cutting it with that gloss really allows you that fast dry. So now my little applique is on there. How pretty is that gold on top of that pink? I'm gonna give it another blast of my heat gun. Not much, it's a very thin molding. And that's gonna allow me to ensure that it's definitely warm and stuck to my piece. So pretty, right? How pretty is that? If you're looking for this Would You Bend, it is available on the Dixie Bell Paint page. It's number 2110 from the Would You Bend. It's actually a set of two. Um, I used one that sewing table a couple weeks ago already. So on the top of this, now you can see my vision, right? This giant, chunky Would You Bend. The beautiful gold handles that are gonna match that. I mean, hello, that's gonna be so pretty, so pretty. And you couldn't even see, I was holding it up and you couldn't see. Try this again. <laughs> there we go. What do you think? Do you think you would try some beautiful ombre blending in apricot and drop cloth? Because it was pretty easy, y'all. It was not a hard mix at all. I know what you're seeing is a little bit more harsh, but in reality, when you look at this blend, it, it just disappears. It's absolutely beautiful. I also showed you today how to use your beautiful tea towel stencil, which is like stuck. Look at it, stuck on the tape and the paper towel. So this is a new stencil that is available here from Dixie Bell. We did this on the sides of my piece on the drawers. I might even do it. Maybe I'll put it on the front of these drawers too. I mean, it's already extra this piece. Why not go all the way and be crazy? So three new stencils available today. This is the tea towel. We also have the beautiful Lotus Bloom, which is inspired by Faf Designs, Connie from Faf Designs. This one is available as of tomorrow on the Dixie Bell paint page. And you have mine, which is the cozy sweater. So cute, looks like a knit, very boho, very fall vibes. Y'all need to try this on a raised stencil because no joke, it's my new favorite thing. I already told you I've kept this dresser, but that is the beautiful raised cozy sweater on the front of my dresser that I put in my spare room last week. Such a great piece. If you need a full tutorial on how to do a raised stencil, I actually took this piece and posted it to my YouTube today. You can go check it out on there and see the entire video from start to finish. Um, and you can see exactly how I did it. Whew, it's hot in here. So that is it. I'll give you a quick recap before I go in case you are joining me late and you didn't hear the colors. I primed this piece with gray boss due to the fact it is a mahogany style red wood and that means it's gonna bleed when you choose a light color. I came in with apricot and drop cloth. And I did a nice little cloudy blend using my best dang brush. This brush is amazing. I now know it works great for stenciling too, which I did on the side of those drawers. We were really su successful with that today. I was uh, quite impressed. So it already was my favorite brush. It just now has like many, many different uses. <laughs> stenciling and waxing and cloudy blending, all of the things. So if you don't have one of these, go grab one. They are available on the Dixie Bell paint page. I love them for sure, highly recommend. And we painted a little gold on some Would You Bend. I showed you how to get that mousse dry, lickety split fast. I mean, there's nothing coming off from this Would You Bend. It's on there and it looks like a million bucks. Stay tuned, I'll probably finish this piece in the next couple days. And if you want to see what that color value actually looked like without those bright lights and natural sunlight, I did post a TikTok yesterday and you can check that out as well. I hope everybody had a lot of fun today. My name is Melissa. I am a brand ambassador for Dixie Bell and the owner artist at the Top Drawer RVA. 
If you ever want to come over and hang out with me on my page, I did link it above my head. I go over there live every once in a while and play with paint as well. But I am here every Wednesday at 3 to teach you new, fun, and fabulous things using Dixie Belle Paint products. I hope you all have a great day. Go check out the Cozy Sweater Dresser on my own page because I'm super proud of it. I'm very happy. Thank you to Dixie Belle for allowing me to inspire a stencil. It was a lot of fun. Take care, everybody. I'll see you next week. Bye.